message. Hello, everyone. Hello, LinkedIn. We're live. Um, and we'll see how this goes. I, I'm Sarah from Tribal Impact, and I am here joined with Mike Umika from ABB. So hello, Mike. Welcome to the, welcome to the li LinkedIn Live. This hello, is a bit, Sarah. It's hello, a bit of a new... Well, yes. Hello. Hello, LinkedIn. And you can leave comments for us. So as we start to go through this, and I know there's a bit of a delay. So anybody watching the recording on this, if you come to a future one, there's a delay from when you put the comments in to when we get to see them. So please bear with. Don't feel like we're ignoring you. Um, so, yeah, and this is our first LinkedIn Live. We're going to do a series of these. And we've invited Mike. He's a bit of an experiment for us. I hope you don't mind, Mike. But you were up for it, weren't you? So... Uh, we're going live on LinkedIn, talking to different organizations, different people about topics around social activation. And today we're focusing specifically on the topic of social selling, uh, modern selling, digital selling, digital sales, buyer first selling. Doesn't matter what you call it, because there's lots of different ways to, to call it, but focusing on sales and marketing efficiencies with social selling, uh, specifically for the manufacturing sector. So, um, so Mike, do you want to kick it off and just sort of introduce yourself and what you do, what you're responsible for, and then we'll see where this goes. So. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much, Sarah. Um, and also, good welcome from, from my side to the audience that is listening to this um, live stream. I'm very excited um, to, to be here today and also having this discussion with, with Sarah. And hopefully, you can also get some insights of, about what, what we have been doing and, and where we are also currently at the journey. Maybe before we get started, some um, words about myself, um, who I am, and, and where I'm also located. So, so my name is Mike Umiker, as Sarah in, introduced me before. Uh, I'm based in Switzerland, working for ABB since more than 15 years in various um, roles and responsibilities, predominantly on the sales and sales and marketing side. Lived a couple of years in the Middle East, in Dubai, a couple of years in Germany, and um, now back since around three years back in Switzerland. Uh, I have two lovely daughters that keep me busy whenever there's uh, time. And um, and I really enjoy the work that I'm doing and, and, and really also kind of exploring new things. And this is the beauty that we have in the in the function of, of marketing to explore new new possibilities. And that is how I believe you stumbled across the topic. We well, didn't stumble, you researched it, um, but of social selling. And when did you first start looking at that as a topic in ABB Motion then? When did, when was that first considered? How did it come about? Did you see other people doing it and you thought, hmm, should we be involved in this? Yeah, actually already a couple of years back and, and, and it was the more like, when when is the right time to get started? And and I mean, like large corporates like ourselves, you know, we, we have some changes as well. Um, mm -hmm. Motion was then founded roughly three years ago in how we are currently um, um, structured and, and also established. We have 20,000 employees um, worldwide, more than um, 40 factories um, serving more than 100, um, um, 100 countries that, that we that we are um, located. And, and we are kind of the market leader in drives and motors and, and and this this was kind of when is the right time and, and we have started to see even before covid that that we get more and more interaction on these on these social channels and 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 that was then kind of at one stage we thought okay now it's the right time we have the capacity and it's, it's also the right opportunity to, to look into looking backwards i would say we were just right on time um that that we could already prepare ourselves for the whole COVID situation. Mm, yeah, and who would have anticipated that? Um, so hello, Keith, I see you. Thank you for your comment. Keith Lewis from Zurich there. Um, so actually, looking back over the last 18 months, two years then, Mike, what, what, how, is the, how has it impacted the buying process in your industry? Um, you know, how did, it, how did it change the way your sales teams approach customers? Yeah, I mean, f first you have also to start a bit, not we say always start from outside in, what kind of, let's listen to the customers what they want. But this time it was the opposite. So so, so we thought like, how can we also continue to stay engaged? Um, I mean, we, you know, you get pressure on travel restriction. We commit very strongly to sustainability targets. So traveling is maybe also not anymore the, the, the number one 
um, target that you need to have in terms of customer visits. So, so then we thought about how can we still be engaged with our customers? And we put domain expertise very high on our agenda with our sales force that we have in the field. And how can we get them closer to our customer? I mean, it's, a, it's impressive, you know, if you have more than 5,000 front-end salespeople that would be very active in social business networks. I mean, it, it's a powerful army that you can build up and, and also really ensuring we, we, we demonstrate our domain expertise and we can have one to many connections rather than in the traditional way, you know, you, you visit the customer, you have your one or two contacts till you get to the next contact level or the senior management level or, or, or who name it in this company. It just takes you much, much longer time. And, and of course, the whole COVID situation just was an Im immense boost of this one. And for us, it was very important that we, if we do it, then we have to do it sustainable and not just kind of trying a bit here and there and, and everybody goes through the same pitfalls. And that was then also the reason why we, why we reached out to, to a company like, like yourself, Tribal Impact, to say, hey, how can we make this sustainable? What can we do on our side? And how can we also leverage this across an organization like ABB Motion? Yeah, and sort of um, scale it up, really, because you, you you go into it in a pilot phase, but then how do you scale that further uh, in a way that you can do it yourselves, I guess? So now at the start of this, I said digital selling, modern selling, social selling, digital sales, buy first. So <laughs> how would you define it, Mike? Because, I mean, everybody uses different terms. It gets quite confusing. What do you call it at ABB? For, for, for me, it's social selling. Um, right. at, at the end, I, I use my social engagement. I use my network to, at the end, um, also hopefully to, to have to generate some revenue out of it. Digital selling, yes, sometimes I put it under the basket of digital selling, but digital selling is for me much broader. This can also include an e-commerce elements, or it can include then the whole e-commerce digital marketing journey that you have in there. But just the, the terminology on the social selling with, with business networks like LinkedIn, this is what I, what I call social selling. And I do even make there a very hard distinguishing between brand awareness and, 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 and social selling because the, the, the main purpose and the objective of every sales guys need to be at the end of the day, you want to either generate a lead, uh, turning into an opportunity, and hopefully also win win an order out of it. And, and, and this has a bit of different objective than making sure we are known, we are heard, we are kind of strong in what we are doing as a company, and we have certain reference and reference case, which is for me more the brand awareness, more kind of the broadcast messaging. So you, so that's quite interesting, because I want to just focus in on that in a second, because you're in a marketing role, uh, mm -hmm. involved in social selling. So I get quite often a lot of people saying, well, why is marketing leading social selling? That shouldn't be a, that's a sales thing, isn't it? And so what, can you tell me a little bit more about the integration and the efficiencies that come when marketing and sales work together? How does that work at ABB? Are you supporting sales? Are you part of sales or? I, I, I usually formulate it in a way like marketing is two steps ahead. Um, yeah. Sales should focus on what we have today. Sell what is available today. But marketing has kind of the outreach into the future and, and think like, okay, what, what are different what are different markets to explore? What are different um, platform tools, way of, of also selling? At the end of the day, it, they need to work very close, very hand in hand. So 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 the, the mechanism needs to work very smoothly. But having said this, sales, they are here today. They are getting measured every month, every week, every year. Their clock is set to zero and they need to, they need to hunt for yours. So they usually have not the bandwidth to think about like, hey, what could we do next or how can we bring in next lead? And for me, it's at the end, it's nothing else than adding another tool or methodology to our lead management and process, which is anyhow than coming from, from marketing. And, mm -hmm. and I have the the, the luck that, that I, with, with the team that I'm working with, um, we, we have this end-to-end -end possibility from a marketing and sales operations side that we really can bring a, 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 a new way of selling, um, a lead generation, lead management, but also the methodology behind that we can make it sustainable. Yeah, 
I love that. And you mentioned something earlier that I picked up on as well when you said, you know, helping the sales teams to generate leads, to generate their own leads. Now, there are a lot of industries out there where that's marketing's job. And there's a very clear definition. Marketing fills the funnel with leads. Sales finishes them off. Um, but it sounds like that's not the case at ABB, you know, that you're encouraging your sales team to generate their own leads a little bit, you know, through their own thought leadership. No. Yeah, <laughs> de de definitely. Of course, we also try to fill the funnel on the marketing side. But I, I think in the industrial environment and in the, in the B2B, elements or tools like marketing automation, they are not yet at this sophisticated level um, in the usage. I'm not saying about the tool or the platform, but in the usage for yeah. B2B customers and also about the readiness. And, 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 and this is a change in the journey because quite often, you know, if it's not made by myself or found by myself, I will not touch it or I have a limited amount of time in my in my day. So I rather go for what I have created. And it's a bit of mindset and social selling. I think it's, it's a great bridge between this this transformation as well, because you, you can reach out at very low cost at the very high efficient pace to to your customer, to your installed base. And, and also sharing what you're actually doing, with what, what you're like to do. And, and on the other hand, you start generating leads. And, 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 and I, think, I think this is also helps at the end that we can maybe in future, you know, the leads that the marketing team traditionally brings in, that also sales see them as high priority and say, these are high qualified leads that I get. But it's a journey that we have to go. Um, and, 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 and I think, I think social selling helps us in, in also in the awareness of generating leads through more digital channels. Absolutely. Now you said a key word there that I just wrote down, transformation um, and journey. All right. So I've picked up two words that you've mentioned. So this is not something, you know, we know this and I think you know this, that it's not something you can do a quick training thing and then everybody's converted and they're all on a new path. And so you've been on this journey for a couple of years already um what what sort of barriers or struggles did you have to overcome to sort of convince people because i when we work with customers very often they'll think oh we just do a training session and then they'll all be social sellers but they all come when they're ready they don't all come at the same time different people start from different places and they move at different paces so what sort of barriers and struggles did you have to overcome to start you know getting some traction with this this program yeah. I, I would say we first started once with after we had the idea. We of course made a bit our own study and research, and and how could we sell this to our division sales management and say and to our sales organization and say, hey, look guys, this is a great opportunity. This is what we can do, and this is um, this is also what can get out of it, and and let's try it. And and we have our values, and one of the values is about courage, about curiosity taking calculated risks. So I also use this in, in, in my internal selling of the of the journey to say, hey, look, guys, let's take this as an opportunity. Let's take a calculated risk. Try it out. So we did this with a couple of countries where we said then, like, who is interested? Because it's very important. You have to start with the ones that are also interested, that are open for it. And this is something which we learned at day one. Social selling is not for everyone. And you need to find the way on how also do you, do you differentiate between the ones that are more on the traditional sales, not saying that this is bad or, or better, but also that you find a way on how to onboard the ones that are open for this kind of way of reaching out and interacting with customers. So once we have done the pilot and we have seen over a certain time period, yes, there is some potential in there. Let's, let's continue the journey that was then also the moment when we when we start really to engage much closer with with yourself as an example or also with linkedin where we said how can we how can we bring this now to the next level yeah. and what we did then is we said we will take a journey which is a foundational journey and we take a journey which is for experts and then we used a bit the kind of the mathematics of, of the um, social selling index, which is which is available for everyone. And, and, and then we said, OK, who are the ones that go on this foundational journey and who are the ones that go more on the experts? And we, we were convinced, and I think it's still the right decision, that we said, look, the foundational journey, we can manage and bring it on board on our with our own knowledge and, and, and workforce, meaning this is more about these 
basics um, that the people, do you have a profile or not? You know, do you use your profile and, and how do you get your profile updated? So, and this is then how we did also more on a one-to-one -one coaching with, with the individuals. And later on, when we scaled up to more than 15, 20 countries, that was then also the point where we said, let's create this as, an, as, an, as a learning journey as part of our Motion Academy. So everyone can go in, gets task what to do every week, some task. And that was kind of the foundational basement. And then the rest, I think we speak about more, is about then in the in the expert journey. Yeah. And that I think that's quite interesting because you clearly categorize like the people that were ready for more hands-on one-to-one support and the ones that have maybe need the foundational knowledge, which can be self-service. I mean, in huge companies, you know, it, it can be quite difficult running the same webinar over and over again to cover the basics. But actually, there should be an element of self-service, which you have recorded webinars and things like that, that you can you can do that for. Um, I wrote something down here, Mike, and I can't read my own writing. You said something and it's got me. To, anyway, there you go. Um, I've got another question for you about your personal journey on this. So oh, I've got a question there. Keith, how many people did you have on both those tracks? Foundation versus expert? Yeah, question, that's, that's a very good question, Keith. Um, what what we said is let's we we kind of made the hypothesis and said fifty percent is out of social selling scope. So that was the approach to say, look, fifty percent of our workforce, sales force, they are leaning towards social selling. Fifty percent not, and then out of the fifty percent, we said, look, roughly ten percent will be in this expert level. And, and the rest we will position somewhere coming, starting from foundational, moving to the lower end of an expert level. You don't need to have all the experts. And an expert level is about an SSI about 70, 75. This is really someone that is that is using it very actively on a daily basis, but also not only on posting, but it's on interacting. Um, it's, it's also about networking and so on. So, so, so the ten percent we put on the track for for the expert, and 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 the forty percent, um, this was more or less than on on the foundational journey. But having said this, the the range was rather big. So the entry level to the to the um, expert, we said everything above an SSI of fifty five. That was kind of the the lower end. But then then you really from there you have kind of. A handful of people at the end of the day in a country where you let's say where you have 15 salespeople, you have maybe one or two that are that are then on this on this expert level, and also then kind of in our view eligible uh, or entitled for 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 a platform like Sales Navigator um, and so on. So I, d I remembered what I wrote actually, Mike. Um, what was the role of sales leadership in all of this? How did you engage them? Did you engage them differently, or did you just put um, put them on the same program? Um, but both. I mean, first of all, they, they are they are uh, beside my superior. They are the, the sponsor and 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 also kind of the ones where where we have been building up this journey. So so they were on one hand, they were kind of uh, I had to bring them on board, and and some they were kind of all in at the beginning. Others that are more in project business, long-term business, they were kind of asking valid questions. Yeah, what does it bring to me? You know, I, I sell, for me, a lead time of a project takes six months or or, or I have my known customers. So so, so what, what, what's the point? Um, but, but I think we could answer all these questions as well and, and just try it out. And so, so that, that was one kind of the onboarding and, and really getting their sponsorship um, on, on, on the sales side. But then on the other hand, we also took this as an opportunity. We, we included them as good as possible also into the journey beside regular updates um, through, through, through our site, the kind of where, do, where are we on the journey. We also invited them to participate um, the calls the, the coaching sessions we gave them individual one-to-one -one coaching sessions and I think I think this was very helpful for them because they are also busy from morning till evening and and if you give them an hour of coaching session with for example yourself Sarah or someone from your team they had a one hour focus on the platform and and you know already little things can help like how, how do I make my profile or what happens if I push this button there or, or what is a good post? You, you know, you, they have yes. they have the possibility in an environment which which is safe because they they are senior in the organization, but which is safe and gives them a good playground 
um, to, to, to also learn the expertise. And, and there are some that are more active than others, but I think it's very important that, that also our sales leaders, um, they are the thought leaders and, and, and are on the journey and going as a role model ahead. Yeah, totally agree with that one, Mike. Um, I'm going to ask one more question about the program before I ask about your experience. Have you found that social selling within your organization suits certain roles more than others? So maybe key account managers that need to grow within existing accounts or for new business development uh, type roles. Have you seen any differentiation between which roles adopt it quicker, better, faster? More, with more success or not really? It, it depends. I mean, it. We, we have roles that are more local, meaning in a country, and then we have more global roles. So the global roles are obviously the ones that, that, that see this as a much better opportunity because they are located in one place and have to reach out to their global accounts. So so I, I think they, they became very enthusiastic and they have been already in the past uh, very enthousi enthusiastic. However, they obviously also appreciate that there is suddenly more people around in the company and, and that it becomes more normal and natural. So I, th I think for, for the more global people, um, it's definitely a, a, a help to, to reach out cross, cross borders. Then, then on, on, on the sales side at the local level, I, I think there, there you have again a bit, bit both fields. Um, the, the ones that are like, oh, now I have to fill up my CRM and now, and now I, then I still need to do some, some posting regular or I need to reach out. Um, you, you, you see both. However, there, once they got into it and once they see like, hey, look, my boss, who is a connection to myself, is a connection to my customer's contacts boss, for example. Mm -hmm. um, then, then this helps. This, this helps the icebreaker. This helps also to kind of share information or even if, you know, just keeping it as, as a reminder. If you are working in the, in the after sales and, and, and you, you post something about your remote monitoring, um, the end customer may, may read in this who is part of your network. And, and then the more you are interactive, it's also a possibility that they remember then yourself about, hey, look, I, I just read there something and, and yeah. may, maybe let's reach out to the person. So I, I think it's it, it varies slightly, but for everyone, they have to find a bit their, their niche. And what is also important, how we have set it up, is that we have a champion network and, and we have one person that is driving it and, and he's doing a really great job um, on, on keeping the, the crowd motivated. <laughs> Brilliant. I love that. There's a really good, for anybody watching, uh, LinkedIn <clears throat> created a book, uh, an ebook called Buyer First Selling, I think it was, or something. And there's some really good stats in there about how well connected organizations are into accounts and how quite often they rely on one connection. And it just reminded me some of the things that you said there about leaders opening doors to connections you wouldn't otherwise get to. I think they call it multi-threading. So, um, so search that out. Um, LJ, hello, LJ. Thank you for watching. Um, so thank you for this great conversation. What social selling sales marketing strategies did you implement specific to the industrial market? Ooh, that's a Interesting question. Can you answer that, Mike? <laughs> Anything yeah, <we're>... <laughs> specific to the to the industrial space? Because it's quite different to say the tech space and the IT space. So yeah, I mean, what what, what we are currently also in the development. Um, we have not fully done it, but it, it's really a bit more than moving towards the account based marketing. I I, th I think this is maybe answering a bit your question. So so that we are really setting up more targeted. Um, um, I would say now communication or social selling activities. What is very important is, is whatever you do is the content. And, and I, think, I think this is very also very important for, for, for any organization that wants to do this. And you need to work closely with your communicators because you don't want that your salespeople start spending a lot of time on creating content. Yes, of course, they always need to bring this personal twist into it, but they need to be able to take it from a, from, from a source that also is then relevant for your audience and make it relevant for your audience. And, and I think this is a bit the direction that we go more from bringing the people first to a general level, being familiar, being aware what it is, what can it be, what can it mean? Um, also moving into monitoring, tracking, 
how successful are we? There are multiple ways, and, and maybe we speak about it a bit later on also what, what are the KPIs we are looking for. And, 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 then, and then going even more targeted. So going a bit away from this still broad, showing domain expertise, you know, sharing a white paper and um, giving your personal experience to it, but then more going really targeted to certain accounts. And, and this is what, what we are now also in the next steps are going to, to take up. But you need to have this basic knowledge. You need to have this basic understanding. Else, elsewise, um, you may more um, create more damage than, than really success at the end of the day. I, I hope, yeah. LJ, I, I could answer your question, but very, very good question. <laughs> and may, maybe, maybe just to add, overall on our strategy that we have as a as, as a motion business areas, definitely. I mean, we have worldwide coverage is what is one deep domain expertise is another one tools innovation that's another one so so we, we really try to pack it also into our into our global strategy and and, and really encourage the people to to make use out of it mm, good good answer mike good answer thanks lj for that one i've got another one from oliver as well oh, i knew you'd ask a question around this oliver thanks for all the insights mike and sarah and sarah in brackets as like i shouldn't need to be here really um <laughs> It's the mic show. Uh, like it. May I ask, how do you classify, in quotes, the legal status of a social seller's profile at ABB Motion? Who owns the data generated via your program considering GDPR? Oh, we've had some fun there, haven't we? Very, very good question. <laughs> Oh, no, I'll let my answer that. <laughs> no, 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 definitely. We have also there some of our experience. And, and as, as we are a global company, um, GDPR data privacy is very important to us, to our employees, but obviously also how do we treat the data with our customers? Um, we, we have an internal process about data privacy, and, and, and that's also what we applied for, um, for, for using such a platform like LinkedIn in terms of social selling. So, so what we had to do is um, we went internally through the, through the process on, on getting the platform approved country by country with the data privacy officer in every country because every country is different. And I can tell you, even to my surprise, um, based in Switzerland, I thought Switzerland is very kind of open and, and, and neutral to, to anything. Even Switzerland had, um, had given a veto in a sense like, look, yes, you can use it, but we as a company cannot and, and are not allowed to see any activities of, 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 the, of your salespeople. And, and, and that meant then more when we go into this expert level, when we were um, in or when we are using Sales Navigator, that we had to create islands, um, bubbles. So one bubble for Switzerland, um, people are using it. We can trust and hope on their positive feedback to see do we generate leads or not. Uh, but, but we were not able also to see the activity of our people, of the interaction. You will never see what they write individually. So from that point of view, the platform and also LinkedIn says, look, we, we are safe when it comes to, to, to these insights because we cannot see what is one sales um, um, person writing to a customer. This is very owned. But, but we, can, we can see, obviously, the activities. And, and that was then the problem that we had to overcome, that we are not able to see or we are not allowed to see also the activity. And, 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 and that means also you may need to have a minimum number of people when using as a platform like Sales Navigator of, of three. So when you have three, you cannot see yeah, who is doing more and who is doing less. Um, but it's a journey. But normally, I mean, your, your, normal, um, your normal sales or your normal um, LinkedIn profile that, that everyone has of us, um, that, that's not a problem. Because even till now, even if the company has no interest, um, is is you know you, you can you can post you can write um, you can put up even a, a fake company name you know and, and and I think I think that's not the problem. However, what is also important is when you take them such an opportunity as a lead, and this is the same in the past. We were meeting customers at an exhibition. You know, you were starting to chat in a coffee and and you know maybe during queuing or at an airport or whatever, and 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 then. Once you start to interact on, on business topics, what, what, what we have implemented as a process is you take this lead into, you, into our CRM system. 
and then and then the CRM system makes an auto check. Is the person, the contact already known or not? If not, then you will get an automated um, um, email where he also has to give his consent that we can start interact with him um, and, and talking about business. So so, so that, that's a bit how we have overcome also that the situation about um, data privacy and, and GDPR. And as I said, there are countries that are more um, restricted to it and, 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 and others, um, they, they are a bit more open to it. And it's on both sides. It's about customer data, and and it's about um, it's about employee employee data and protection. And of course, we try to urge as as soon as quick as possible in this whole engagement process to bring this as a lead because that helps us also to see how many leads can we create through social selling. I hope I could answer your question, Oliver. Yeah, thank you, Oliver. Knew you'd ask a tricky one like that. Um, I haven't been in an airport for years, uh, Mike. I know you mentioned into people in airports. I was suddenly it's thinking, it's I don't think I'm going to have to start watching the safety announcements with great like attention now when I get on a plane. Um, just, you touched on, <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, with the kids. I won't have time to watch the safety announcement with the kids. Um, too busy like belting them in and keeping them still. You mentioned monitoring and tracking. We touched on it a couple of times. I wondered if you could share that um, a little bit of insight around that because I'm sure everyone will be quite interested uh, to understand a bit more about how you track and monitor success. Yes, um, I mean on, on one hand, I'm also getting asked from from the sales, from the men, from my sponsors, from my manager as well. In in a sense, like yeah. How are we progressing? I mean, it's all great, you know, that we that we are more active and 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 I, and I still believe it's the right thing because we also want to make ourselves ready for the new generation that enters our company, because the younger generation they are more used to these kind of um, TikTok or or Instagram and so on, and 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 we want to make ourselves also ready that we are an attractive employer for for the future. But that's one side of the of of the coin, and you know you can make your story around how great and 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 how customers perceive it. And of course, you need to be very very strong also in your content. I said, I mean, I may repeat this a couple of times, but if 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 you face that you everyone shares the same content, then you know it's it's not it's not so relevant. But then when it comes to the measuring side, um, we have, of course, also respecting data privacy. We have for the for the foundational, the, for the countries where we are allowed also to ask for, I mean, the basic tracker is, is for, for sure is the social selling index. I, th I think it gives a good base, it gives a good start. That's also a bit the entry level that we say towards, towards using a sales navigator license because it comes with its cost. Um, that, that's one of the element. Then, then for the ones that are in the expert level on and, and use using a sales navigator, of, of course, there you have just more insights as well from from the platform that it offers about emails, about opened, um, about about interactions, uh, about numbers of of sent um, communication, about you know who, who do you who do you follow and so on. So so there you have more insights that that helps us. But at the end of the day, we also try to really capture the, the numbers of leads. And, and, and this is considering some human, human behavior, but this is where we then also urge and motivate the sales team, especially the ones that we have now on, on this program to say, hey, look guys, I mean, the success with the program also stays and falls with your, with, with your habit and, and how, you, how you manage it. So we ask them, please fill it in as a lead once you come to the point like, hey, look, let's have a customer visit or let's have a virtual call so that we start to measuring it as a lead. And once it is in our sales or marketing funnel at that stage, um, then we can monitor it across the entire value chain from, from a qualified lead to an opportunity to one loss and so on. And, and that's the kind of which, which helps us to, to see at the end also the revenue. And then we can also see, do we have visits on this, on this lead or not? Um, what is the interaction that we have? So I, I think that then we can capture it. But it's really about the one is the, the SSI. Do you, you see the activity? Um, are we moving ahead or not? And, and the second is and really once it, it is entered into our CRM and, and then we can follow the funnel. No, it's good. And I know different people do use different methodologies, but also I think what you do quite well is the quantitative as well as the qualitative. So getting the stories, listening to the successes and, and 
not every story is we've won a deal. It could be that, you know, you've accessed a, a, an account that you haven't spoken to for, you know, you wanted to access. And these are all small stories. I want to ask you a little bit about your journey, Mike, um, because just before we came on here, I was like, how active were you before you started this program? And yeah, I'd let you explain sort of how, how far you've come and the, how your journey, I think would be quite useful for the folks watching. So. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I have my LinkedIn account is already quite quite old. I would say as more or less from 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 day one. I, I had a, a LinkedIn account uh, after also university, and 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 at the beginning more on the German mark. There is another company um, as well which is more known on the, on the German market. But then um, moved on to to more on on the English speaking side. And, and I always had my, my my LinkedIn account. I kept it up to date because it also helped me to keep up my personal CV and 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 keeping engaged. And 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 then, and I have also to admit I'm not very active on Facebook. So so that's something which is more for me like a burden uh, because I, I couldn't really see the value out of it. But that's not that's just my own personal um, um, experience or my my personal opinion. So, so, so then, then, then I have also seen like, yeah, I mean, I have pretty good network, I would say, strong network that was growing over the years and so on, but I never really used it also in an active way. And, and, and then through this program, of course, I also like myself to push on, on the, on my personal boundaries and say, look, I mean, there's still something out that, that I can also learn. And, and it's not about more the strategic thinking and kind of, you know, praising and, and bring people on board and saying like, ah, this is the right thing, uh, let's do it. No, but it was also for me a journey to say like, hey, look, I, th I think I can also do more on it. And, and, and even myself, I had to find my own role um, in, in my position because I'm not now the person that is visiting every day a customer. So what is my role? And I think this is also a good message for, for the audience here is you need to be able to find and define your own role in, in, in this space. And, and, and I, I think I found my role a bit more in terms of sustainability, um, in terms of um, um, employer um, awareness, um, mentoring, mental health, a very important topic also on our side in, in, in the company, but also about domain expertise and, and, and elements like, like social selling and so on. And, and, and of course, trying to influence also my personal network. Um, and, and showing like, hey, ABB, ABB Motion is, is a great place on one hand to work for, but also on the other hand to, to, to really um, show and, and demonstrate the products and what we do for, for the world. And as I said, sustainability is, is a very important topic. ABB committed all company cars by 2030 are electric. And, and, and I, th I think these are the spaces also where we as, as Motion can contribute to it. And, and, and then this helped me once I understood a bit and, and gained my own confidence um, to in which space I belong to, that helped me also to be more active. And, and, and I, I think um, in the meantime, I can call myself also be the thought leader in, in showing also the direction and, and not more kind of running the program um, with, with the team that we are having. Yeah, I think that it, I think it's a great story, actually, Mike, because I think, you know, you, you've sort of been on the journey with everyone else that was going on the journey, but you pushed yourself. Um, and I think sometimes you've got to sort of practice what you're trying to preach to the organisation. But you, what I love about this as well is you push yourself, because when I asked you to do a LinkedIn Live, you're like, I haven't really done one of these before. It's like, OK, it's fine. We'll do it. And you were, yeah, we'll do it. We'll do it. So, um even still now, I think you're going to be writing blogs soon. I think I've, I've taught you all I know, I think, Mike. I can't do anything else. <laughs> I'm going to be learning from you. Um, we've got a, another question here from Victoire. So thank you. Um, thanks a lot both for the great talk. Mike, are you using social selling for B2B marketing only or also B2C and B2B2C? And if so, how do you manage these approaches differently? I'd say I think ABB is more B2B anyway, isn't it? So I'd say, but I don't want to put words in your mouth, Mike. I'll let you answer yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's also a very great question. Yeah, yeah of course, on, on one hand, we are predominantly B2B. Um, however, there, there are also elements at, at the end, you know, where, where e even the brand or it's not only ABB motion at the end of the day. I mean, we, we have great products like... Um, 
charging stations for 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 your personal private household and so on and i mean th this all go comes then again into it where, where where you don't really differentiate when you when you when you also give your comments or we just had recently a, a launch here in switzerland about um first EV charging for for public bus transportations here in the city of Baden, where which was one of the founding places of ABB, and and, and of course this is also something where, where we as a as as a business area are, um, are are very supportive because at the end also our products are part of this value chain of part of this sustainability um, ambitions that also other companies have. How, however, um, the portfolio that 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 we are representing, Motion. It's it's less um, on, on the B two C side. Maybe someone has a whirlpool at home and 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 he has he has a pump and there is one of our frequency converter that it, that is running and, and and of course it would be great if then he goes into 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 the wholesaler as well and and, and picks up um, our frequency convert because of one of our our posts, but it it, it is it is and will stay a minority also in in our customer um, target. So main channels are for us OEMs. Channel partners very important on our side, um, distributors, and and then of course also the end users with the install base. But those are predominantly also B two B customers. There and there are a few organisations actually. It's a really good question because some of them will. And you said about channel partners, but actually activating channel partners to be able to do social selling, which is quite interesting. So there's one thing about enabling your own organisation, but then taking that out to your partner ecosystem. Um, yeah. Some of our customers think that's a really good thing because it helps win mind share in the channel partner in the distribution sector. So you know where they're selling lots of products, and if they have to choose one, they'll probably go for the one that enables them the best. The best. So anyway, just a thought. And, and, that, and that's oh, maybe, yeah. maybe just to, to add here. Um, that's also something which which we also try to allow to, to our own channel partners. And, and, and also in the US, we do there quite many activities yes, with course. our with our own distribution network um, to, to, to really engage them as well, kind of be active. And, and for us, a channel partner which is signed up with ABB, that's like an, an extended arm. So so these are like our own our own colleagues and, and and we also want to make uh, um, them uh, the, the, the content and the training available as good as possible when also the time is then ready and right and then of course this is this isn't something which in the future will show us super good question thank you very much we're coming up to the end now uh mike so i just wanted to see if you could give us one last piece of advice for maybe other manufacturers that are considering a similar approach maybe they're it's a bit early days for them they, they're thinking about doing it but not sure whether it's a relevant approach for the manufacturing industry have you got any hints or tips or guidance yeah absolutely i, I would say irrespective of the industry and also the manufacturing industry because especially the manufacturing industry we, there we have a lot of engineers engineers they like to search they like to find online information and and what we also see is like 60 70 percent before you even go into a purchasing moment you try to search online and i, th I think it's a golden opportunity irrespective if you have short cycle business long-term business or if you have only a handful of customers it, it's it's worse going in this direction it's on one hand worse for 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 upscaling um, your sales it's it's it should be nothing special in future and it's also really um, there to to equip your own people make them ready for the future and being a being a, an attractive employer as well um for for the future so so I, I think there's at the end nothing to lose what is important try to make it sustainable try to make it a bit with a structure behind um, so, so that you also can generate an impact and then you can also manage a bit better um, the, the way how, how 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 the people kind of use it because they still use it under the tech quite often of of, of your of the employer where they are employed mm -hmm. brilliant Thank you very much, Mike. Um, great to hi, Sandy. Just joining in. We're closing up now, Sandy. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. But you can watch the recording. This should be recorded. I think we're going to put it on the website so you can go look at it. And we're ungating everything on our website, so you don't have to register for anything. But feel free to come and have a look. Um, that is fascinating, Mike. Thank you so much. Um, I've really enjoyed chatting to you. Might have to have you back, actually. So uh, thank, thank, thank you. you. We'll see where you on your next stage of your journey. But um, thank you, everyone, for watching and for taking part in all the fab questions. They were absolutely brilliant. And 
uh, and for your time, Mike, for sharing all your knowledge and experience in this space. I appreciate it. So thank you, Roger. Also from my side, it was was really a pleasure. I mean, giving you some some insights, and and I hope we could also help you to over overcome this challenge. But I would also like to thank you, Sarah, for for the opportunity, and I would also like to like to thank our division sales management, my superior, you know, that believed into it, that that really said, yes, let's invest, let's invest the time. I would also like to thank Roy and Phil, who are really also part of the driving team in this program. And, and it's really great um, having a team there that is also believing in the same. And, and as I said, it's a calculated risk taking, but I think it's the right time to do it. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Have a great, great rest of day. Great morning, evening. Um, and we'll see you on here in a couple of weeks time. We're talking to Anita from Ericsson. So, um, so yeah, come look out for that one. All right. Thank you. Bye then guys. Bye-bye.